Hello, my name is Sean Means, and I have the honor of teaching at Pittsburgh Westinghouse. There I teach 11th and 12th grade U.S. and African American history. This past summer, I had the pleasure of learning under the tutelage of Dr. James Foreman, Jr. in his seminar entitled Race, Class, and Punishment. There I worked with a group of individuals invested in their communities, beholden to a sense of purpose, focused on social justice and equity for all. I feel lucky to have worked with this team and I look forward to collaborating with each of you in the years to come. So, my unit is called the American Dream. For members only, a look at the educational, economic, and social systems of oppression and the founding fathers who engineered it. It's a mouthful, I know, but work with me. There's levels to this. <laughs> like each of you, I am motivated by my students. They are our why. And it's the only thing that keeps us on course when we've had little sleep and have been grading papers throughout the night. Thinking of my students, I think of a common line I often use in my class. You wonder why. I use this line when they get a grade back after they haven't studied for a test. You wonder why, all right? I use it when they're talking throughout the classroom and then I ask for their notes and there's nothing on their paper. You wonder why. Yet this phrase is multifaceted as it can be applied to all areas of life. Looking outside my classroom window, I see Pittsburgh, often called one of America's most livable cities. And yet I often ask myself the question, why? Why I wonder why people in the Homewood community live a such, such a different in such a different situation than their neighbors in Point Breeze or Squirrel Hill. I wonder why schools, like neighborhoods, remain segregated and why some people have to travel miles to purchase just fresh produce. I ask why, yet sometimes it feels like a rhetorical question. The truth can be uncomfortable. It can make eye contact hard to keep. Yet if these truths are self-evident and all men and all women are created equal, then how can so many people live such contrasting realities, not only in Pittsburgh, but throughout the nation? How can we honestly explain to our young people and to ourselves the gap in wealth, student achievement, and the disparity in penalization when it comes to crime and punishment within our judicial systems? Now, to be transparent, this unit is fresh off the grill. Hence, we've just started chipping away at it in class. We're currently in our earliest stages, in the earliest stages of America, and we have just finished examining the early documents and pieces of legislation. But let my partner Avery tell you more about that. He's gonna knock that out, just, just wait. In closing, I'd like this unit to encourage my students to take action. Students like May Knight, who helped bring more college classes than we've ever had in Pittsburgh Westinghouse. Perhaps it will also inspire Erica and Aaron to pursue a family business after we talked about Black Wall Street and Tulsa. Maybe after reflecting on the judicial system, David Mitchell might want to pursue a career as a public defender, or Mondell may make his way to the Supreme Court. Or maybe, just maybe, Diamond Ellis or Imani Wesley may take my job and teach kids from our community. I want to extend my thanks to the initiative, my students, and my fellow fellows. This has been a chance of a lifetime. And enough of me, enough of that. Coming to the stage now, Avery Wise, one of our most decorated students and a student leader throughout our building. He's gonna knock, knock it out. Go ahead, come on Avery. You might have just over-exaggerated a little bit. <laughs> no, but how's everyone doing today? Y'all doing good? Good afternoon. good afternoon. My name is Avery Wise, and I am a student in Mr. Meege's CHS College and High School history class. He has created a new curriculum unit that has expanded my mind in numerous ways. 
especially in the history of America. As a young black man living in a predominantly black neighborhood, a lot of personal questions erupt. However, one of the reoccurring themes of our unit has been, why didn't people of color have more influence in early America, and how is that linked to the current wealth and opportunity gap of today? Of course, we had Obama, the first African-American president, but what about in the 18th century? When slavery was a major economic business, why weren't any blacks allowed to stop it? There are so many reasons for the current state of affairs. To so, to begin, so to begin our study, we started by analyzing the Founding Fathers. Mr. Means has showed us how the Founding Fathers made promises in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution that they didn't live up to. In the Declaration of Independence, it states, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Yet this has never been the case. In addition to other forms of legislation, the three-fifths clause didn't even recognize blacks as entire humans. This piece of legislation made all slaves only count as three-fifths of a person. If all men are created equal, then all men should be considered a whole person, no matter the shade of their skin. Also, my teacher explained to my class about the importance of generational wealth and how it is important to have a seat at the table. In the unit, he used an apple pie to represent America's prosperity. The main reason why people all over the world come to this country is that you have a chance to be whatever you want to be. You can pursue happiness, but you have to have a chance to dream. The table represents the opportunity to dream. Having a seat at the table makes it easier to achieve prosperity. Without a seat at the table, you are and can still be left with the crumbs. These crumbs are the leftovers that those in power didn't care for. Things like the 13th and 14th Amendments, voting rights, and civil rights alone aren't enough by themselves. We need seats at the table in order to fix what we know is wrong with our country. With all these handicaps, somehow African Americans made it work. They made their own small and growing communities. Furthermore, they were peaceful with their difference in opinions and were tormented for it. Reading forward in the unit, I'm, literally, I'm really looking forward to talking about the US economy and African Americans' place within it. How do we build small businesses and make, money, and make enough money to support our families? Why were small communities like Tulsa allowed to be destroyed by white supremacists and no judicial punishment was brought forward? Hopefully these inquiries will be answered by the end of this unit. This is the first time in a long time that I, as well as my peers, were actually engaged in history class. From book work, to videos, to group discussions, a vast majority of us were eager to learn more. Through sincere engagement, Mr. Means has helped me grow as a student. I look forward to returning to second period with my peers and growing together in the months to come. Thank you. Thank you.